and action. Good evening. My name is Morgan Timmy. I'm coming to you from Campbell University in beautiful Bowie's Creek, North Carolina, where the creek is always rising. My group members and I of the Colossius Group in Engineering 310 here at Campbell, we did a lab to determine the absolute temperature. The absolute temperature is at zero Kelvin, which is the temperature at which everything stops moving, all matter. My group members are Fernando Clemente, chemical engineering major, Austin May, and Jesus Tavera, both mechanical engineering, engineering majors, and then myself, also mechanical engineering major. All four of us are in our third year of studies here at Campbell University in the engineering program. So what are we gonna learn today? We're gonna learn what an ideal gas is, and what it looks like in, the in theory and in practice. We're gonna learn the relationship between pressure and temperature. We're gonna see the use of an absolute zero here with an ideal gas and how we use that to determine an absolute zero. And then at the end, we're gonna answer some questions. Those questions, how does our gas behave and is it ideal or not? How can we find the value for the mass of the gas inside of the sphere? And what was our experimental absolute temperature? First, we're going to go to the beautiful Caribbean, where Fernando Clemente is going to tell you more about ideal gases, the pressure and temperature relationship, and then we're going to come right back here. Stay tuned. We know that the air inside the sphere behaves as an ideal gas. The characteristics of the ideal gas are the volume of the molecules is negligible, the collisions between the molecules are perfectly elastic, and no force of attraction or repulsion are between molecules. The question we are going to use is this one, where P is pressure in kilopascals, V is specific volume in meters cubic per kilogram, M is mass, R is the universal gas constant, and T is temperature in Kelvin. Exciting. All of these units are in SI because our objective is to find the absolute zero temperature. Thanks, Fernando, for teaching us about ideal gases and telling us about the equation that governs them. Let's look at that equation a little bit deeper, see what it really means in context of our experiment. So this equation, pressure times specific volume is equal to the mass times the ideal gas constant times the temperature. So this equation looks kind of scary, but there are some things that we can hold true so that it simplifies it a little bit. Our system, you're going to see it in a minute in our next segment, but it is basically just a sphere. Think of that as a sphere, not an artist, um, with a rod coming off of it. And then inside of here is a temperature and a pressure uh, sensor. So this is a closed system. So we know that the mass is not going to change. So this is going to be held constant. It is a rigid sphere so that we know the specific volume is not going to change. And then this R, this ideal gas constant, this is a universal constant. So we know that that's going to stay the same. So all three of these stay constant, which is pretty nice for our um, purposes because it tells us that if either pressure or temperature changes, the other one has to change in at the opposite direction in order to make this true. To hold this true and if it, if our gas inside of the cylinder is an ideal gas then this has to be true. Uh, from this we'll get a straight line on a graph. Boom. It's pretty exciting. Um, so yeah now that we know what ideal gases are we've heard a little bit more about the equation that governs them. Let's see exactly what we did in our experiment. Off to Austin to show us about that. Take it away. Uh, I'm out here in beautiful Yosemite National Park with waterfalls behind me. Uh, I'm going to tell you about the experiment that we conducted. The equipment that you needed to conduct this experiment includes an absolute zero sphere with the sensors that go along with it, a computer to display the data that you record with the sphere, and the capstone software that allows you to connect the sphere to the computer. You also need different temperatures of water, which we used ice, normal temperature, uh, and water that was heated with a water heater. We also need a bucket to put that water in. Let me go back to the lab and I'll show you how we conducted the experiment. 
Oh, sorry. I thought he was going to be in his lab already. That's what we told him to do. But obviously, he doesn't listen very well. So you get me for a few more seconds until it gets to his lab. He's there. Back to Austin. Welcome to my laboratory. Today we are learning about an absolute zero sphere. This is an absolute zero sphere. To conduct the experiment, we take an absolute zero sphere. We dip it into the water. Then we let it reach a steady state temperature. And once we get a steady state temperature, we take 15 of the corresponding pressure values and then take the average of those values. The values will show up on the computer screen and then we'll plot each data point at different temperatures. We use room temperature water, then we use freezing water, then we use hot water and cooler water, which will give us four data points for the closest results. Welcome back. Thanks, Austin, for that exciting explanation of the methods. Now to Fernando to talk about what we should expect to see after data collection. We expect to see a linear graph with a y-intersection at negative 273.15 degrees Celsius. If the data collected shows a y-intersection at that value, we assume ideal gas. If it differs, we can deduct that the gas inside the sphere is not ideal. To calculate the mass of an ideal gas, we divide the specific volume of the air by the volume of the air. Since the gas is ideal, the mass and the specific volume don't change throughout the experiment. Our experimental absolute temperature intercepted the y-axis at negative 273.04 degrees Celsius. Welcome back. Now let's talk about some of the data that we found. We did four trials ranging from temperatures of 1.97 to 41.6 degrees Celsius. At those temperatures, the pressures ranged from 95.18 to 108.9 kilopascals. Now, it's off to plot it, and Austin's going to show us the plot and what happened with all of our data. Take it away. Coming to you from Paris, France, I'm going to tell you about what we saw in our experiment. Our data pretty much mimics what Fernando predicted our experiment would show. Uh, we plotted the various temperatures with their corresponding pressures. Uh, and those data points gave us a straight line with a y-intercept of negative 273.04 degrees Celsius. The accepted value for the absolute temperature is negative 273.15 degrees Celsius, which leaves us with an error of 0.04%. The main reason for this error is the fact that the bucket is not insulated as well as we need it to be. Morgan! Oh, hello! Sorry about that. <clears throat> Just getting acquainted with my calculator. Whew. It's really exciting to see an experiment come together. Now, we're going to go to Jesus, who's going to answer all of your fan questions. Well, not all of them, but at least three of them. Take it away, Jesus. So we see that the gas actually does behave ideally within the volumetric sphere. And we see that because since the sphere's volume does not change, it remains constant, the temperature, as it increases, the pressure will also increase. Now, we see that we have a 0.04% error. And what we had obtained for our absolute value being negative 273.05 kelvins is just about 10 degrees away, or 0.10 kelvins away from the actual value. So that being said, to find the mass of the air within the sphere, we actually took the bottom of the sphere and divided it by the specific volume, which would leave us with the volume of the air, mass of the air, mass of the air. All right, here we are back at the annex. Engineering Annex at Cambridge University, and I'm just going to kind of close it out with a little bit of a discussion. So, Austin, what was your favorite part of the experiment? The most interesting thing that you learned? Well, Morgan, the most interesting thing that I learned is the characteristics of an ideal gas. We found out that molecules of an ideal gas are negligible in comparison to the volume of the gas. We also found out that the collisions are perfectly elastic between those molecules. We also found out that there are no force attractions. And it's also pretty interesting that from 
the realization that it's not the gas, we can calculate the mass of the air inside the sphere. So we did the calculation and we took the volume of the sphere divided by the specific volume of air inside the sphere. The volume of the sphere is 18.9 times 10 to the negative 30 feet cubed. And then the specific volume of the air inside the sphere is 0.075 pounds per feet cubed. So if we take those numbers and divide the volume divided by the specific volume, we get a mass of 0.252 pounds of air in the sphere. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, I think the coolest thing to me is that based on the equation, we can see that what we're learning in class is actually true in real life. You know, um, we've seen PV equals MRT with V being the specific volume, but once we actually we did the experiment, got the data, and plotted it on a chart with temperature on the y-axis and pressure on the x-axis, we were able to see that air behaving as an ideal gas actually gives us a straight line. Um, and then pressure and temperature do behave linearly with each other in an ideal gas, which is pretty exciting to me. Um, just want to say a couple quick thank yous first to Professor Gardner and Dr. Polisit from the Campbell School of Engineering for uh, helping set up this lab and really kind of giving us the task of making this video. I probably wouldn't have done it otherwise, and it's been a lot of fun, and I've learned quite a bit, not just about the thermo, but about making videos in general. Um, I want to thank the Campbell School of Engineering for being awesome and giving us tons of hands-on learning experiences. and. Um, you know, really teaching us how to be creative in ways other than just in engineering. We're not just crunching numbers, we're out here making videos. So, for Austin, myself, and the rest of the Clausius group, thank you for watching. Have a good day. Done. Nailed it. What's next? Kidding me? Thank <laughs> you.